taught a class on uh, Dr. Gamara. We're also progressing uh, very nicely through the Seifo. This chapter, he's telling us about stylistic uh, ways that the Tenayim speak. Okay, because we we uh, have said many times in the books that we're studying, it's very important to understand the style of what's being said. For instance, you have to know that they they don't use extra words. Okay, but even saying that that they don't repeat things, they don't use extra words. There are certain uh, conditions under which they break the rules, so to speak. As we said, Shorbor Maben and Heather doesn't have a logical um, uh, format. You, st you talk about an animal, then you talk about a pit, and then you move to the mava, which is either another animal or man, and then you talk about the ash. It's just you people who are wise speak from either the, le the, the smaller to the greater, the greater to the lesser, but this is a mishmash. So Rashi says it's because that's how they present the Torah, and Tosfo says that's good according to some people, not other people, and he explains it anyway it's according to the Torah. But there's another Rishon that I read in the sheet that says the agenda here was to uh, remember things, and the, the easiest way to remember it is shore rhymes with bore, and maba rhymes with heather, and that's why we, we could add that why did it say adam, why did it say maba, and why did it say ash, when it uses two separate phrases, because there's other agendas that the Mishnah has besides transmitting information, and we have to be sensitive to that. Okay, so our first preference always is that there's a logic behind the order, which is Informational, either it's based on the pasukim. Okay, not either. Or if it's based on the pasukim, then we have to explain why. Or if we exhaust that possibility, we say, wait a minute, there's too many problems here of saying it's based on the order of the pasukim, and it's also contradictory to how lo harisekazen in the sefer. So we can say that it's another agenda called uh, uh, having information being accurately transmitted over time. Okay. So this is the this is the Derech Hatan. He says like this: Le'olam b'chol no say no say. Notice that word. You see, no say. I was discussing with with, right. with someone. Okay, this is a technical word. You see, and it's uh, if you if you're not sensitive to what no say is and nasu, then you miss this type of um, analysis. But it's going on all the time in the Rishonim, especially, I said, the Sephardi, Sephardi Rishonim, the great, the Russian, uh, who's a mix, but, you know, in, in, in Iran, all, all these people knew. I explained to someone, it's like if I, if I say to you, uh, you know, uh, Arabic numbers division, even if I say to you calculus, right? So you, you don't yell at me, you're an Epicurus. It's just that these are the, this is the information that's around, you know? So in, in the Sephardic world, the, the, the logical thinking was a part of being a, a, a scholar, okay? Uh, not that the Ashkenazic world were not logical, they just didn't use these terms which were either borrowed from Aristotle or developed from him. Anyway, that being said, Le'olam b'kol nose v'nose havimai in the das. Eze devarim, eze tenayim, sarech shiamatsu bo lakshiro. What things or conditions are necessary in order to make this uh, particular uh, halacha mutar? Okay, I mean milk. I mean, well, what is called milk, and uh, what's the milk you can, what's the milk you can drink, what's the milk you can't drink? You have to know under what conditions. Very important to define what conditions are necessary so that the halacha will come out. There is the Borim Hem What will, um, what you need to make a din kosher and what you need to make it possible. Vakama Hem Hapsrikin Lahakshir, Vakama Hem Hapsulim. Then you have to decide, okay, how many conditions are necessary to say that this is mutter and how many conditions are necessary to say that this is possible. So you have to define them, and you have to uh, understand how many they are. It's very important in anything that you discover, you have to know which factors are greater than the other factors. 
there more factors to say that this is kosher or to say that it's treif? O im hem sheva b'sheva. Sometimes there'll be a standoff, and we won't know if something is kosher treif because it has both elements. Valze Omar chada l'tavusa v'chada l'rusu. The Gemara says there's one positive aspect in this uh, uh, no say that would lead us to make it kosher, and there's another aspect that it has which would lead us to say it's not kosher. Okay, so you have chazakas and robes, and they can be asked. You have to count up how many aspects there are and see the interaction of those aspects. We had a lot of the, a lot of it in Menachas where they counted up the 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 the, the aspects for and against them. He's going to say many times they go according to the rove. Okay, so the Gemara will say Chada Litavus Vachad Larusa or Chada Litavusa Vatarte Larusa. It will count if this has one positive and two negatives. O Tarte Vatarte or Chave. Why do you do this? He says, Ki Aslin Basaruba. Normally we go after the majority, okay? I don't think we always go after the majority because there's other factors that can come in that the minority could be more important. But normally that's what we like to do. Okay, it says I'm experiencing problems with the internet. I hope not. Can you still hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Yeah. I it, it got broken contacts? up. Okay, good. I can hear you. So it got broken up, everyone. Yeah. Like a, okay, a it's but it's nothing, nothing terrible. Not like last week, where I lost you for like five minutes. Nothing terrible. Okay, that's what he says. So he says, uh, Kagon, uh, the show from Rosh Hashanah. It says it's Nico Vasotmo. It, it, it has one negative aspect that the shofar has a, a, a hole in it. It has one positive aspect that it was filled up, but it has another negative aspect. It was it was Shalobamino. Uh, it wasn't from the same material that the shofar was built. Is that going to be Akev? So I just quoted the mission here just to that he brought, I just brought the whole mission. It says, show fish in this dark, the duff group is still puzzle. A uh, uh, show for that's cracked, and then you glue it, it's puzzle. Dibuk shivre, show for's puzzle. If you stick pieces of a show for together, it's also puzzle. Nikuv, yekev, sotmo, it gets a hole in it, and you fill it up. In the yakev, it's hot to key a puzzle. It has another condition. Not so simple. Um, the first one is that if it had a crack. Here it has a hole in it, and you clog it up. So if the clogging uh, prevents the sound from coming out, so then it's puzzle. The M love, and if it doesn't, it's kosher. And it says it's okay, letocha bor, letocha duso, letocha pitos. If he blows in these various holes. Ima kol shofar shemeya yotze. Im kol habor shemeya lo yotze. He has conditions. If you hear the voice of the shofar itself, then you yotze. I'm hearing shofar Rosh Hashanah. And if you hear the the reverberation, the echo, so then you're not yotze. So those are conditions. V'chein, mishaya over achrei beis knesses. A person goes behind the beis knesses, or shahaya beis or samochla beis knesses, or his house was right across from the shul, and he hears the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, or alternatively, he hears Megillah. So now he has to have another, another condition. Im kiven libo, if he has kavanah to be yotzei, then he's yotzei. Vim lav lo yotzei. Now, Afal Pish is Zeshma Bezeshma. Both of them heard. Zekiven Libo was a low Kiven Libo, and that's another tonight. So, every no say that you speak about, it's not simply that it's kosher or it's treif. It exists within certain conditions, and you have to elaborate them and see which conditions are going to uh, create the condition as it will be kosher or not. He brings another example from Sukkot, Osher Sachach Sukkot Sheyeh Midava Gedule Min Haaretz Ve'Ena Makabel Tuma. When it comes to the Schach on the on 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 Sukkot, 
So it has to have two conditions, that it's something that's grown from the ground and it's something that can't recover to it. As the Mishnah says, Ahadla les ha-gefen, ves ha-dlas, ves ha-kisum, You put these things, uh, vine uh, uh, refuse and uh, you know, pumpkin refuse and all these things on the roof, it's a puzzle. Vim haya sichu harbe mehem, oh, she cuts some kashera. But if you put a lot of them on, I guess they won't. Uh, melt in the sun, and therefore they'll stay there and give some shade. Or you cut them, then they'll be kosher. Zerklal, and here's the tenayim. Kolshu mekal tuma ve'eno gedule mina aretz ein mesachim bo. Anything that can be mekabel tuma, and also does not grow from the ground, so that's not kosher. The cold dove she ain't a macabal tumor, anything that doesn't macabal tumor, Ugadolim in the Aretz Besachim Bo. Kyotsu be able to push up. And he says, look at all these examples. So it's very important to not take things as as we just learned here in, in, in um, Sevi Gayon, not take things in a general way. Because every halacha has its practice. And you have to be able to very clearly understand under what conditions. Um, whether it's a show for schach, basa uh, what conditions exist to make something kosher, make something treif. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, everything we we, we do is an analyzation of the 613 mitzvahs, and one of them where we're really trying to investigate in the end of the day under what conditions was that mitzvah performed or not performed. Very good. Okay. Here's another rule that he tells us. Le'olam kesha tishlol min hanose dabama. This is what we're talking about. Whenever they say that something is not, ratzlamar enose, something is not this. Sarich shetishol in ken mahu. Very nice. It's not that. But what is it? Okay. Derech uh, mashal. Keshetoma Ruven Eino Chacham. If you tell me that Ruven is not wise, so Yesh Lishol and came out. Okay, very good, he's not wise, but is he a normal person or, or is he a fool? Okay. Oh, Ze Eino Kesev. You could say something is not silver. So you always have to ask, very nice. I know what it's not. Im Kein Mahu, but what is it? Is it Sahab or Nechoshis? Nechoshis. I guess wrong. Yes, probably so. Okay, so here's the, the rule. You don't define things by their negative. He's going to get into the details of that. You always, because it's very good if, if it's not day, then it has to be night. There's certain negatives which he's going to talk about. We spoke about this a lot, which are diametric. They, they, they're polar opposites. She's either pregnant or she's not pregnant, it's either day or it's night. So one is the, the affirmation, one is the denial of the other, but there's also um, are things which are not polar, which are scales, that have a lot of grays in between. So if you tell me one end of the scale, it's not, you haven't defined exactly what it is, like this example here. Very nice, you're not a chacham, but there's a large distance between not being a chacham and being a, a fool. So you have to define that. You always have to ask from the negative, well, what's the positive? This is yes. similar in a way to what the Ramchal was saying, as you have to define something by its opposite. So uh, not, and the opposite may not be exactly the same thing. Right. You so have to you know if the opposite, opposite, right. Right. If it's a polar opposite, then that's very good. You know, but if it's not a polar opposite, it's not going to help you that much. Although it will eliminate certain things. I mean, if he's not a Chacham, so you know what he's not. Exactly the positive aspect, you're not sure, but at least you've done something. Okay, that's what he says. Okay, ki hashlila eno modiyalano mihiyos adover. The negation of something never tells you what it really is. Okay, <clears throat> and that's why v'zeh shubab atamud elamai. Very nice. You you say it's not that. So then, what is it? Okay. 
Baroa im yesh la hashiv kenegdo mashi shivulo. Now, when someone <coughs> you say, okay, it's not that. What is it? So now you have to see if you can now throw back at him what he's throwing back at you. Veda kize ein emsa even aim. The only time an opposite doesn't define your no say is if there's a middle point. Okay? But Mishlish Echat he says, Vida Kize ain ems e benehem, Mishlilis Echad Yechavid. When there is no middle point, so then I can define myself by the negation of the other thing. The im yesh mc, f shishi mc, but if there's a middle point, so then I can't. So he's going to give an example. Mushal Risho. If I say, ato eno yom, I say, today isn't, it's not day, so then it must be night, because those are true opposites. Mushal Hasheni, but if I say, mayim eno chamim, if I say, water is not hot, it doesn't mean it's cold. Kilo yishav shimkar, it doesn't mean it's cold. Ve'ev shashem poshri, maybe it's warm. Okay, so there's a basic little rule uh, we've we discussed it many times in in Tefunos and also in Bigayon, but the you can't define things in terms of their opposites unless they're true opposites. The gam can kasher yihu shnei tenaim o amaraim cholkim. When you have two tenaim or amaraim arguing with each other, she echad machish din al svar chavero. One denies the law the other one is saying, or the svar the other person is saying. Now, even though person is denying the other person and he's proving it from a Pasik or a Mishnah, Osholo HaPerish, who, Min HaMishnah, sorry, either, even though one person is being proof from a Pasuk or Mishnah, or he's uh, removing that explanation because of a Mishnah or a Kasuk, Yeshachal Shol Ureploni, Hydrash Manale. This Gemara always does this. Very nice, you're saying that you don't use the Pasuk that I'm using for my uh, Chiddush but you have to use it for something. So what are you using it for? That's what the Gemara always does. When someone says, I, he doesn't learn that Pusik for that, so the Gemara always asks, so then what does he do it for? Okay, LMI, what does he do it? Use it for, it can't just be in the air. And that's what he says here. Yeshus uh, called Reploni, Hydrasha Manalei. The Yelich Saviv, Ad Shiomer HaTalmud Reploni Lesley Hydrasha. You see this all the time in Shas. They'll keep going back and forth and they'll say, well, he doesn't use it for that, he uses something else, and how does the other person learn it? And they go back and forth. And always they end up with one, with the final move has to be that there's one drasha that the other one doesn't hold. Okay? O Reploni Low Darish High Crow. Or he doesn't explain the words that way. He does, you know, in Shemo to Shemo, he doesn't, he doesn't explain that this. He says, oh, that's just Lushen B'nai Adam, and you can't make drushes on the, on the double words. Okay, so they always have to get to that place where there's one Pusik left over where he doesn't darsh with the other one as well. Okay, and all the information has to be covered. Okay. Zehaklal, um, he says, this is the general rule. The olam yetir le'echad mehem. There will always be left over for one of the two. O pasik o din o svara. They'll either not, one, one of the two will always be left by saying, I don't dash in the pasik that way, or I don't hold that that's the din, or I don't hold that svara. Ad shiomru hatamid kumo shomar lechantil. That's it. The talmud goes back and forth until that. Okay, so we see that all the time. Anyone learns? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, uh, but it's very good. I love to do is map these things out. It's it's so exciting when you actually take your time, and you see the pushes and pulls they have, and map it out very carefully. Okay, And Now he says there's two ways that we learn information. Two ways. Very powerful little rules here. I mean, you know, who could monitor these things like this? 
O mi mashmaus halashon. You either learn it from the the what the words uh, mean. O mi yituro, or because there's extra words. That's what he says. He says the way we learn basically is because the words say it, either directly or through inference, or through an extra word or extra line. What he says like this is that when there's an extra word or an extra uh, letter, okay, now even though that extra word and extra letter does not have the meaning which will convey the law that you want to talk about, we still can darish it for that law. Kamosha marnu im eno inin lezet tinu inin zeh. It's a very, very important rule, and it's 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 almost a wild card. But that's what he says. He says, when you have an extra word, so then we we can say that this extra word is talking about something which is not directly. Um, in the meaning of the word that's extra, okay? We can darshan an extra hey, we can darshan an extra vav, which by itself doesn't mean anything. But that's really part of Torah Shabbat Peh, that there's, there's encoded information in, in, in those areas. Now again, this is a Kiddush, because normally our first approach is always, it means what it says and it says what it means, and I can't go beyond the literal meaning of what it says. There are, however, Kabbalot that we have that this extra word comes to teach us a new concept, okay? And that's beyond, that's beyond the, the, you couldn't, if you just read the word and you didn't have the Kabbalah, you would know it. Like, okay, if, it, if it's not talking about this subject, matter, put it on another subject matter. But that's the rule. We have that, uh, we have that uh, Kabbalah. Not everything that we do is from Mash Musa Lashem. Sometimes, we do things because the words are extra, and therefore they must come. There's encoded information to teach us an extra idea, an extra thought. Okay. So it's like I always assume that that's what halachah mesh mesina. When you pick a a word that's ina in and use it for something else, it's not the tano amara saying it from his own swara. It's it's sort of like a mesira that he had. Right. Uh, it must be because the words themselves don't say it. Right. right. But, and, uh, okay, so they have a Masara that they, they sometimes even they, 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 they know the halacha and sometimes they'll put it as an asmacht into the bus, that's something else. But, they, but if it's actually there, I mean, what does it mean, Rebbe Kiva Dash and the Tagim? I mean, we can't understand those, that level. Okay, but basically, right. okay. uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a very sophisticated level where things could fit in at a higher level that we can't see, and then there's levels where it's, you know, I'm uh, really uh, like a gazerus, as you say, for Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, but it's important to know that these rules, because not everything comes from, which we'd love to say, that everything comes from Mashmu Salash, and it doesn't. Okay, and you have to be aware of that. All right, we'll stop here. Okay. Um, Very good. Uh, slowly, slowly, we're getting through the, yeah. through the books. Right. That's, I, that's that's a lot I, of wisdom here. I see when I learn it, I'm always so amazed at his logic and how everything works, and then I feel bad that I, that that you know. Then he mentions about the 21 things I can't really, you can't remember them on your own, or or, or these 10 things. You just we have to go them. back. Right. We're going to have to take some examples. We're going to have to do it. It's it. I mean, it's also. I mean, this is the book that the Higayon is the book. I, the book that I least did. The other books were much more. Uh, uh, right. Their 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 Tawellis was much more uh, obvious to me. And the Higayon is extremely abstract. I understand everything he says, but to take that abstraction, slow down and apply it, means mastering the material. And he says that that's what you have to do. And then applying it to what you're doing. And it's, it's all there. I mean, he does, he, we're not talking about a person who is a dreamer here. This is strict mathematics, you know what I mean? He's just a person that he sees it and he does it. And uh, okay, so if we can, if we can improve our skills, uh, I mean, I'll have I master them, but if we can improve our skills, that's also a, a valuable Right, that's, that's perfect. Okay.
Okay. It reminds me of my, my neighbor who um, had a problem with his hip, and he, and he started walking improperly because he was in pain. And now the, the, he, he wants to try to walk the right way again. He can't. He, he forgot how to walk the right way. So it's interesting. You know, here you, you, this whole book is about th something that everybody does naturally thinking, but people get into the bad habits of thinking also or thinking properly. You have to learn, retrain yourself how to think properly. Right, 100%. 100%. So either people don't take it seriously or they worse is they think they're thinking properly and they're not. But once you understand these rules, uh, things become very, very clear. Very clear. And it, it's, it's really, really liberating. I mean, I had this discussion, instead of just having a, you know, a brawl, you know, with, with this person who was not religious, I mean, we actually had an intelligent discussion about something. You know what I mean? We actually could go from point A to point B and keep on the point. And that's really what it's all about. We're not just interested in, uh, in, in you know, fighting for fighting's sake or, you know, showing how great or non-great we are. We're interested in, in that speech of the mirror, just finding out what the real truth is. Okay. But, okay, Baruch Hashem, okay. Zohar, to, to gain some of this wisdom. So uh, next week we'll also do a Wednesday uh, yeah. meeting. Yeah. We're, Fantastic. We're, this time is good for you. It worked out, worked out well for me. Oh, it's excellent. Excellent. I actually can sleep at night. That's nice. I mean, I did. I was doing other things, but <laughs> at least in theory, I had okay. the time to sleep. Okay. Be well. Have a great day. Okay. And okay. Uh, thank you. A lot of